Broadcasting. Blog Talk USA. Are you tired of waiting for change? One zero one two. That gives me one thousand two hundred and fifty feet. Texas. Sounds the arrival of the flight from Los Angeles and Chicago. And welcome everybody to this Tuesday, April 26, 2016 edition of TNZ Talk. It's primary day in five northeastern states. We'll be talking about that uh, amongst a, a variety of other issues, not to mention a kerfuffle or two. I thought I'd get it in early today. Joining me now to do this is the Z in TNZ. Uh, I am Tony Trippiano, by the way. That would be Richard Zombeck, a top blogger with the Huffington Post and with Liberals Unite. And welcome to this Tuesday morning edition, Mr. Zombeck of the TNZ Show. Good morning, Tony Trippiano. Uh, almost to the end of my hot chocolate. And that's uh, both a, a, a good thing and a not so good thing. Um, it's kind of sad. Well, it's it sad. is in its own way. But I've got a glass of ice water, which I enjoy as well. And so, please, don't cry for me, Argentina. Uh, I, I did get an email <laughs> from a listener in New Jersey this morning uh, responding to a conversation that we had. Uh, after the New York primaries and what was considered some voter suppression, etc. And it was uh, I who said that I'm not so sure it would have changed the result at the end of the day uh, had those voters not been purged. And I walked through uh, what I said was and is uh, a process that's used in most states Uh, to purge their voting list to make sure that they're accurate. And the guy tried to give me a lesson in how wrong I was, but he only used opinion, not fact. Well, you know, opinion is um, more valid than fact. (laughs) We see that in the elections all the time. We see that in in campaigning all the time. Yes, but he's not a politician. He's a voter. Well, but he's right. Sorry. Let's just go with that. Sorry, can't play that game. Just <laughs> can't play that game. Uh, I didn't respond to it because uh. I have learned not to. Because uh, I don't have time to do that all day long. Because you and I both know it would end up being a back and forth. But whatever. Uh, primary day around uh, the northeastern part of... Of the United States of America, Connecticut, Delaware, Maryland, Pennsylvania, and Rhode Island. Let me give that to you one more time. Connecticut, Delaware, Maryland, Pennsylvania, and Rhode Island. And for the Trump supporters that may be listening, Connecticut, Delaware. (laughs) Or as my my mother from France pronounces it, Connecticut. Pennsylvania. And Rhode Island, I'm sorry that you interrupted me, but it's something a Trump supporter would have done anyway. So, anyway, that's the list. That Uh, is my mother pronounces it Connecticut. She's also uh, she's also French. Does she have an accent, by the way, a French accent? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So she is actually saying yep. Connecticut. She's just saying it with a French accent. She's saying Connecticut. Because she's got an accent. Right. <laughs> well. Lighten up on your mother. That too. Lighten up <laughs> on her. There's that too. Um, <laughs> do we, you know, do we? We're going to. We're going to break this down. Um Oh, Bernie Sanders might win Connecticut. Besides that, he's uh, SOL. Uh, Donald Trump is going to win all five states. And the only real question there is how many delegates he walks away with because of the proportional distribution in some states. Uh, The reality is at the end of the day today, 
Uh, Ted Cruz could be Mr. Richard Zombeck. Uh, uh, not just technically, but absolutely mathematically eliminated for any possibility of garnering the nomination on that first ballot, the infamous first ballot. No, he could still he could still win this. No, I said techni- not technically, but realistically, if he loses, why are you doing this to me? You're 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 arguing with me on everything <laughs> based on nothing. I don't have well, the I, mental I heard, capacity for this today. I heard I heard from his campaign that he could still do this. Yeah. Okay. You were watching what Fox K- News? Kasich, K- Kasich saying. No, nah, I was watching Cruz News. Uh, Kasich, Kasich is saying he's he's still in this too. Here's the thing, right? Is in order for Kasich to win, he would need 162 percent of the remaining uh, delegates, and for Cruz to win, he would need a hundred percent of the remaining delegates. Every single one and Kasich would need every single one and more than a half. So well, every single one and a half. I um <laughs> I posted a cartoon from the Washington Post last week uh that uh, had uh Trump uh Cruz and Kasich in a boat. And Trump says, I'm the only one that can steer this ship and Cruz says, I'm the only one that can lead a mutiny and the Kasich character says, I'm the only one that's sane. My problem is I can't count. Right. That's funny. Right. That's funny. Co- you are you are correct, sir. Yeah, I can tell by the way you're laughing. Hey, listen, just well, see, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm turning into Ed McMahon. Um, then you need to chuckle in a weird way. You are correct, sir. Oh, at, oh, oh, oh. at everything I say. Um, <laughs> there you go. Anyway, um, <laughs> Hillary, again, is going to win the lion's share of the delegates today. Uh, I think this actually, normally I don't like to play audio this early in the show. Uh, but <laughs> Bernie Sanders, a uh, senator from Vermont, did an interview with Chuck Todd on Meet the Press this weekend. And Chuck Todd, I think unfairly, by the way, characterized this as an excellent interview by Bernie Sanders. Oh, Uh, that was that was completely ridiculous. Yeah, it was. And uh, I actually captured that at the end of the audio because I wanted people to hear it. Um, with that said, let's, uh, if you don't mind, listen to that interview. And we'll let people decide for themselves if it's an exit interview now that I've already tainted it. But uh, listen, pay attention, and then uh, Z and I will talk about it on the other side. Actually, I think it's important that you said that because then you don't get to the end and you go, wait a minute, i got to hear that again. So, you know, at least now we know that he thinks this is an exit inter- in- interview. All right, very I'll, good. I'll just I'll just play the I'll I'll just play the audio. Yeah. So what is it? Explain it to me. Well, we're going to have to do uh, obviously win big uh, in the number of the uh, primaries and caucuses that yet remain. Uh, a poll came out yesterday that had us within striking distance of California, our largest state. I think we could do very well in California. But it, it starts with winning some states here, winning a Pennsylvania, it, winning... It means, well, Canada. bottom line, the arithmetic is you got to win delegates. That's right. what it means. Uh, we have won and in this case, it means big primary wins. Right. Uh, we have won 1,200 delegates. And by the way, when we talk about the campaign, you know, we started this campaign 60, 65 points behind Secretary Clinton in national polls. Now many of these polls have us even a few points ahead, perhaps. Uh, Many of the polls now show us, and this is an important point, Chuck, when Democrats look out into the horizon, what unites us is the understanding that Trump would be a disastrous president. Look at the polls. Bernie Sanders runs better against Trump in almost all of these polls than does Hillary Clinton. But she runs well, too. She runs well, too. But, well, in some cases, I mean, mean, does does that hurt your cause a little bit? It's like, yeah, you do better, but she runs pretty well, too. Well, I think the the answer is depending on the polls, and polls are polls. I don't want to go crazy on polls. But I think many Democrats are convinced that what is most important 
is defeating Donald Trump, and I believe the objective evidence is that I'm the strong candidate. I was just going to say, you've, at the end of the day, you feel like you were given a fair shot at this nomination. Uh, yeah, we took advantage of the opportunities in front of us. We are in this race. Uh, we are not writing our obituary. We're in this race to California, uh, and we're proud of the campaign we ran. We crunched some interesting numbers here. So 17 of the 25 states with the highest levels of income inequality have held primaries. 16 of those 17 states have been won by Hillary Clinton, not by you. Why? Well, because poor people don't vote. I mean, that's just a fact. That's the sad reality of American society, and, and that's what we have to transform. We have what, as you know, one of the lowest voter turnouts of any major country. On. We have done a good job bringing young people in. I think we have done, had some success with lower income people. But in America today, the, the, over, in the last election in 2014, 80% of poor people did not vote. You feel as if, if you could find a way to get people that are fighting at that poverty line, you know, either just below it or just above it, if they were getting engaged in the process, you would do better. If we can significantly increase voter turnout so that low income people and working people and young people participated in the political process, if we could have a voter turnout of 75%, mm -hmm. uh, this country would be radically transformed. Um, let me uh, wrap it up. Uh, question this way Do you feel as if, if Hillary Clinton is the Democratic nominee, and you're not, but Donald Trump is the opponent, do you have a responsibility? to do what it takes to get your voters to support Hillary Clinton? I will do everything that I can to make certain that um, Donald Trump is not elected president. But the, if that scenario plays out, uh, the major responsibility will be on Secretary Clinton to convince all people, not just my supporters, uh, that she is the kind of president this country needs to represent working people in this country, to take on the big money interests who have so much power, uh, to fight for what the American people your want. Your supporters are, for the most part, whenever I... Very skeptical of Hillary Clinton. Very, very skeptical. Tougher on her, frankly, than you ever are. You know, people talk about all this back and forth. What do you think, she, what's your advice to her on winning your voters over? Well, I think she's going to have to be very explicit uh, about uh, supporting a program mm -hmm. uh, which stands up for the needs of the middle class and working families, which most importantly uh, makes it clear that she is prepared to take on uh, Wall Street uh, in a very clear way. Uh, take on the billionaire uh, class, uh, come up with a program that makes health care for all in this country a right within the next several years. Uh, I think those are some of the issues she's going to have to bring forth. So did we just hear, intentionally or not, the Bernie Sanders exit interview? We'll get to that later in the show. I'll and um, I'm sure they did dun, get dun, into dun. it later in the show. I didn't uh, hang out long enough. Uh, to to listen to that, uh, I think I think that again the uh, the assertion there is ridiculous. Um, listening to Bernie Sanders last night in the town hall on uh, MSNBC with Chris Hayes, um, many of these same questions were presented to him, and in fact, uh, Chris Hayes says, "My colleague Chuck Todd, blah blah blah, <laughs> asked you these questions, and this is how you responded." Um, you know, Bernie Sanders understands that he has what he's called a narrow path to victory. He knows that the superdelegates are not going to be there for him. He realizes that uh, even if he, and he will stay, as we discussed yesterday, see, through California, uh, that the chances of him being the nominee are zero and none. And he, of course, has expressed that if Hillary Clinton uh, wants uh, his supporters, then it's up to her to win them over. Um, and in fact, he said at one point during the interview uh, last night during the town hall, and he may have said it uh, during that particular interview, but I don't believe he did, was he doesn't want people listening to him, that they shouldn't listen to him, uh, which I thought was odd. He was criticized for the comment, that poor people don't vote. And he said it's just a fact. Uh, and when uh, he was pressed on that in last night's town hall meeting, he doubled down on it and said, listen, there's nothing controversial about the truth. Poor people, uh, with the working class, uh, and young people just don't turn out and vote. That kind of takes us to the question we asked last week. Why isn't Bernie Sanders... Uh, converting these huge rallies into victories, and it may be the people that he's attracting just don't vote. Yeah, well, we've talked about that, and I mean, at least he didn't say people in the ghetto don't vote. You know, he true. Got, he got into a little, 
he got into a little bit of a problem using the term ghetto uh, at one point. But, I mean, you know, uh, and he he also got uh, protection from uh, some people for using the term ghetto. Uh, I mean, that's what they've been for a very long time. And uh, they're, you know, granted it's impoverished neighborhoods now. Uh, but, you know, and, and I think part part of what he's saying is is really kind of kind of Tony uh, the same thing uh, Kasich is saying you know it's like it's not up to me it's not up to me to tell people how to vote and you know there's been a lot of discussion about that too is can you can you swing voters that are your supporters uh, to do to essentially tell them to do what you want them to do yeah I mean you know I can understand Go ahead. Well, I, I can understand um, the conversation. Let's say Hillary wins. I can understand the conversation being uh, we can't, you know, we can't see a Trump or we can't see a Cruz. Uh, you've supported me through this and you need to vote Democrat. Um, but, I mean, the thing is, is that, you know, it is kind of like he said, incumbent uh, upon her uh, to tell millions of people who have supported Bernie Sanders why they should vote for her. It I is. Don't, I don't think that... Um, it is. But I do believe that he has a responsibility. By the way, he has made a statement that he is going to stay a Democrat. I'm sure you've heard that. Um, that he is not going to go back to independent status once the campaign's over. If he truly believes, and he was asked last night if he would help Hillary, and again, he gave the answer that really it's up to her to attract uh, his supporters. But he also said he will do whatever it takes to make sure that Donald Trump is not elected president of the United States, making an assumption that Donald Trump will be the nominee for the GOP. Um Does that mean uh, what? I mean, what does that mean? If he says, I'll do whatever it takes to make sure that Donald Trump is not the president of the United States, doesn't that imply that he will be there for Hillary? I mean, he would have to be. Well, yeah. I mean, again, it would depend on how how he words that, how he presents it. Uh, And, you know, the way I mean, I agree with him to a certain to a certain point. Right. Is. There, the people that are coming out for him are people who who see, let's for lack of a better term, who see his vision, who see his uh, the way he sees this country going, and you know they they would need to believe that Clinton uh, has a similar, at least a similar vision and direction that she's thinking about. All right, what we have. Think? We, yeah, we have I a mean, caller. I, I think. I think. <laughs> Stop. We have a caller. <laughs> You'll have plenty of time to talk before this hour is up, Richard Zombeck. Uh, if you'd like to join us, three four seven eight five five eight one one eight. And a caller, thank you, and you're on the air. Hi. Thanks for taking my call. My name's uh, Eve. I actually used to work with uh, Z a uh, long time oh. ago. My blessings and prayers are with you. Eve, <laughs> Eve, Eve with a Y. Yes. Thank you. Like French way. So um, I uh, came, I was listening to yesterday's show that you guys had. I'm, I'm a longtime listener of your show. I, I love it. Um, and uh, I uh, came up to a dilemma. Uh, basically, my dilemma is I... Uh, I <clears throat> voted uh, for Bernie and, um, you know, was happy that he was getting so much acclaim. Um, but now that it looks more and more like Hillary will be the nominee, I just don't know what I would do if it's, let's say, Hillary versus Trump. I don't really see her winning. And I also don't see how I would be motivated to go and vote. It's just this is the the first election cycle um, where I haven't been excited by any candidate except, you know, for somebody who's probably not going to be uh, in the running. And I don't know. I guess my question is, like, what how can I be inspired to vote for 
Hillary. Uh, you know, I'm not a Democrat. I'm not a Republican. Uh, uh, I, I kind of lean Democratic in the past, but uh, since just been uh, switched to uh, un- unenrolled. And uh, I guess I'm rambling, so I'll, I'll t- leave it there. You're not rambling. Z, let me go first, and I'll, I'll let you follow up. First of all, uh, thank you for the call. Secondly, um, three names come to mind. Donald Trump, Ted Cruz, and John Kasich. Uh, can you see yourself living with any three of those as the president of the United States? Just yes or no. Can you see that? Well, I just want to say one thing. I could not see myself living with George W. Bush uh, in the second term. And I was considering moving to Canada. However, I was able to live with it. So I really don't see that there would be much difference whether it's a Democrat or Republican in office if it's Hillary as the choice. Because I see right. way too. All right. But but let's 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 just go back to my basic question. All things being equal, George W. Bush aside, looking at the current crop, can you listen? We would all live with whoever would be president. I mean, we don't have a choice there. But, you know, in in a utopian world, do you really see one of the three of them being palatable to you personally? I I think that if Trump were president, he would probably, you know, kind of take a backseat. He would hire on, you know, whoever the Republican establishment wanted him to, to use, and he would be no different from George W. Bush. So I probably could live with the Trump. All right. You know, it's funny you say that, because when you were describing that, I was thinking George W. Bush. And in fact, I always called Dick Cheney the de facto president uh, because he was Dick Cheney literally was the president for eight years in this country, whether people want to believe that or not. Okay, with that said, um, do you believe as I hold 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 (laughs) go ahead, Zay. Well, I mean, because here's the thing. I mean, I I get the 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 back seat and all that, but I mean, I don't I don't really see Trump being able to take a back seat. And w- with him as you know, let's just go with the argument that a president is really nothing more than a figurehead. Blah blah blah. Uh, that said, I mean, that's the figurehead that the rest of the world is going to see, right? That's this is the guy, the Oompa Loompa, uh, the orange Trump. That the rest of the world is going to see and be dealing with and be and and be communicating with and be negotiating with, and I just you know having come from and lived in different countries uh it's a joke I mean that is a, a joke, and as much as I don't like Hillary and I think everyone that listens to the show knows that I don't like Hillary really you I don't would like rather Hillary? suck it up for the next. I would rather I would rather suck it up with having to listen to her for the next four years than have to face my friends and family in other countries once again asking what the hell were you guys thinking? So I mean, you know, I don't know. I wouldn't necessarily say it's a toss up. I'm not. I can't go with well. It's it's a toss up. Uh, Cruz or, or or Trump in the White House, it, I think, is just fundamentally embarrassing um, to us and to the to this country in the rest of the world. If I can interject, it's, it's no different. Like you talk about that's the figurehead, the Oompa Loompa. I think it's Trump is a joke that he himself gets, whereas George W. Bush was a joke that, you know, he was left out of it. Jokes was on him. Did either one of you ever see the Tony Blair uh, movie that HBO did? No. I I, it, no. I I may have I I don't remember it very well. Z, did you see it by chance? I did not. All right, there's this scene in there where Tony Blair is talking about the infamous uh, evening with the Clintons, where they had uh, it, they just found out that Bill was being an infidel, and he and Hillary have this huge fight at 10 Downing Street or wherever the hell they were staying, and Tony Blair's very uncomfortable about it, so on and so forth. A little later on in the movie, George W. is then elected. Now, again, I don't know how true this stuff is. And Tony Blair turns to his wife in this movie and says, and I thought the Clintons were bad. Um, There's no question, (laughs) and we do know historically, that Tony Blair did not like George W. Bush, for a variety of reasons. One of them, of course, was the Iraq War. 
all of that aside, let me just get back uh, to the caller and my little scenario. I believe that Bernie Sanders has pulled Hillary Clinton further to the left than she ever thought she could be pulled. And that she is going to be forced to embrace a great deal of the agenda that he has brought to the forefront. And I mean deal with it publicly. She has she is on record of saying that she's for immigration reform, that she's for $15 minimum wage, that she's for reforming Obamacare in a more proactive way. I do agree with her that we can't provide free college for everyone. It's just not possible. Um, and some of what Bernie Sanders is suggesting we do will never pass a Congress, even if both houses or both chambers are Democratic. Uh, I believe Hillary Clinton just can accomplish more and move us in a more progressive direction because of what Bernie Sanders has brought to the table. Now, I could be completely wrong, but that's just my belief right now, and I'll let, let the two of you debate what I just said. Can I say something? No, uh, no, th- absolutely. I'll, I'll let you speak. Sorry, uh, Richard. Uh, uh, I basically, I, I think that's nice that, you know, he is moving the conversation. I think that Hillary does have to deal with some of the things he's talking about. But I maybe I'm more jaded or cynical <laughs> than you, Tony. Uh, I just think that um, the Koch brothers' money, you know, moving towards Clinton as they, you know, you, in the show that you quoted, uh, I mean, you, you played them. I really think that she's she would be really ready to kind of dispense all of that with like a couple of conversations easily. Well, she, she has made it clear uh, and she made it clear in an interview yesterday that she wouldn't accept any Coke money. As she said, anybody that is financing climate denial and voter suppression, she has no interest in getting in bed with. I'm paraphrasing her now, of course. Uh, and I do believe that. I believe that for her to take Coke money for her super PAC, Uh, Any one of them to take Coke money would be the end of her campaign immediately. Yeah, see, I I just I disagree. And I and I and I and I agree with a certain extent with um, to to a certain extent with with Eve. Um, I mean, here's here's the thing. Right. And and this has been talked about, too, is that the the Hillary that we're seeing right now against Bernie Sanders is going to be is is a very different Hillary than who's going to be running in, in the general. And I think I think she's pulling to the left uh, as as much as she can uh, to sway to sway voters and possible uh, Bernie defectors. Uh, And when she does have the nomination, maybe some of them will come over to her side uh, and she may continue that uh, up until a certain point. But I, I don't I think just like everyone else, once she's elected. That goes out the window and we're stuck with the status quo again. And by the way, Trump and and Clinton are basically tied and we're dealing with two candidates who have. uh, See, that's uh, just unbelievable. See, that's just not true. It's not true. I mean, you know, you're saying something that they're not basically tied. They are. No, they're not. What poll has them basically tied? Clinton's lead over Trump has, has has shrunk three percentage points, and they're like forty six to forty three nationally right now. In what poll? I've not seen that poll. It's an NBC poll. Oh, okay. Well, you know there are lots of other polls out there that aggregate other polls, and she is winning by sixteen points in most of them at the very least. Well. I mean, we're we're seeing your debate. I'm going to say uh, I, I'm going to uh, take my question offline. I guess I'm still uh, I'm going to keep listening. And uh, my dilemma still is like if Bernie is out, unless he really compels me that, OK, voting for Hillary is the way to go. I, I don't know what I'm going to do, whether I'm going to sit this one out for the first time in my life or vote Green Party or who knows what. You know, and I'm going to say this before you leave. Listen, before you leave. Uh, vote Green Party, vote whatever you want, but do not not vote. I, I'm serious. The, the, a third party vote is not a wasted vote. If a third party in many states gets enough vote, it legitimizes them, it gets them on ballots, it does some good. So if there's a third party that you can embrace and you, you just can't live with a Democrat or Republican, and that's okay, 
just vote. I'll leave I'm with, with Tony. That. I'm with Tony on that. Go ahead, Z. No, I'm, I'm with I'm with you on that. I mean, look, the thing is, is that we have we have two presumptive lead candidates that have just unbelievably uh, high disapproval ratings uh, for coming into an election. I mean, I, I don't think we've seen anything like this. We have uh, at least you know, not in our lifetime. I find it fascinating, and I'm sure you saw the polling this morning that Bernie Sanders has the highest favorability rating of any of the candidates by a uh, uh, a staggering, staggering margin, especially amongst millennials who have proven to be extremely lazy voters. Now, you and I have criticized, heavily criticized Democratic voters on this show. And we'll continue to do so. And sadly, after November, we'll probably have reason to continue to do so. With all that said, (laughs) you know, here we go um, on the GOP side of things. Right before the show started, I told you that I saw Michael Reagan, Ronald Reagan's oldest son, oldest child, actually, on MSNBC talking to Mika Brzezinski and, and Joe Scarborough. And... Mika said, is it unfair of me to ask you what you think your dad would think of the Republican campaign? And he said he would be ashamed of them. He would be ashamed of the name calling and the way they are running their campaigns. And you said, no, SH, you know what? And couldn't agree with you more. And so when I stop and think about Bernie's high favorability rating, especially amongst millennials, his, I think, accurate comment that poor and working people don't get out to vote, uh, which is very true. The reason I lost my House seat in 2014, Z, was because uh, all of the unions that endorsed me, and there were dozens of them that did, their members didn't vote. There was a, you ready for this number? You want to take a guess at what percentage of union households voted in that primary? I don't want to guess. 5%. Well, yeah, that's not surprising. Think about that. Okay. 5%. Yeah, well, listen, um, there's there's no doubt that, uh, you know, the outreach to to the younger voters is... um, let me let me take a sidebar here for a sec, okay? And I wanna I wanna run this by you. Okay? I do it all the time. Why should I stop so, you from doing it? <laughs> well, because I want you to think about this, because this has been going on over the, the for the last week. So I want you to put yourself in the shoes of you know a millennial of a younger voter who who likes Bernie and who you know like our caller. Um, just can't see himself um, voting for for Hillary. This is a generation that's been raised uh, with the internet. Um, that's been that was was coming to adulthood around the time of the financial crisis. That have seen nothing but basically uh, debt, uh, high prices for college, um, housing being unaffordable. Uh, and really nothing coming their way and who are on the Internet all the time and then take the news from last week that uh, a Hillary PAC or the Hillary campaign dumped one point three million dollars into Internet trolls and into shutting down Bernie Sanders Facebook pages. Um, not Bernie Sanders himself, but Bernie Sanders support Facebook pages. By the way, that's three stuff in the been last debunked. Two- it's been debunked. So, you know, that stuff has been okay, but 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 I'm saying that that's going around. Right. And we always talk about perception. So, you know, anyone is going to think, well, that's completely possible. People only read the headlines and we've got we've got that to contend with. And frankly, her coming out and saying that it's not happening or whatever, with whatever proof she wants to give. I mean, look, uh, 
the way she responded with, did you wipe your server? And she goes, oh, with, what, with a cloth? You mean, did I dust it? Uh, that's moronic in the eyes of a younger generation. All right, so saying I, something I don't like disagree that, it's that coy. she has a mountain's worth of work to do with millennials. But, you know, another example of the lunacy that's going on out there. Tim Robbins had repeatedly posted that David Brock was paying people. You know who David Brock is, of course. Yes? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. That he was paying people, literally sending them checks for posting anti-Bernie stuff, basically. Right? And he reposted the same tweet dozens upon dozens of times yesterday. And even when he was given uh, direct links to uh, the fact checkers that showed that he was wrong, he still didn't stop. And right. there were a lot of people that said, we think Tim Robbins has become paranoid. That meme didn't stop all day long either. The only point of my bringing this up is that, and you and I talk about this, how many times have you and I talked about both sides trying to out-stupid each other? Because they somehow think no, I, that makes their candidate look better. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, I, I agree with you. I mean, I, I get into arguments with with, uh, with uh, uh, Bernie people and Hillary people yeah, all the do. time. And yes, you it, do. It, God bless you I a mean, lot more than I do. <laughs> And it, it really is almost just as bad as far as here are the facts. Well, no, that was written by some, uh, you know, and oh, the New York Times. Oh, yeah. Like oh, that's I, I get it for the Washington Post. Every, uh, every time I post I mean, that, anything from the Washington Post, I get every Bernie person in the world that I'm connected to. Oh, great. Using the Washington Post as an example. We all know they're a commie, but. Come on, it's the Washington Post, for God's sake. <laughs> well, I mean, I've I've done that, too. The, uh, s someone uh, posted some a pro Bernie, um, a pro Bernie article uh, or or something. It was it, it was I don't know if it was pro Bernie it was anti Hillary. It was a pro Bernie group. And they posted this anti Hillary, either anti Hillary or anti Bernie one. I can't remember. But the fact of the matter is, is that it was written by Peggy Noonan, right? God. And my reaction was like, my reaction was, really, we've really, we've stooped this low that we need to use an article by Peggy Noonan to make to make an argument for for progressives. Are you kidding me? Well, now, let I me, mean, now, come let on. Let me tell you, I, I got a private message on Facebook this morning from someone that I have at least a decade relationship with through my radio show. I've corresponded with this gentleman regularly. I've actually had drinks with this person. We've had coffee together. I wouldn't call him a friend, but we're certainly very friendly. He sends me this morning information that proves that Bernie Sanders is getting millions of dollars in PAC money. And guess how he's getting it? Through conservative PACs. That yeah. the Sanders campaign, and, and here's the crazy thing. There is some truth to that story. That there are conservative PACs that are spending money on anti-Hillary uh, uh, stuff that's become, I don't know, androgynous in a way. You don't know where who it's coming from, and you don't know who they're supporting. But some of it's actually been pro-Bernie. But by no measure is the Sanders campaign involved in that in any way, shape, or form, right? But according to this, this well, yeah. re relationship that I've had of 10 years, now this story never, ever, ever mentions the Sanders campaign in any way, shape, or form, yet he makes that immediate jump see that they obviously are coordinating with these PACs that are spending money on anti-Hillary ads. I wrote him back two simple words, and they were, that's ridiculous. 
He has yet to respond. <laughs> I thought it, I thought it was going to be two different simple words. Ah, no. Nah. But um, like. Like, like my dad will send me an email every once in a while when he's pissed at me, and it'll just say, F you, nasty note to follow. <laughs> <laughs> but so, so the article from, from, uh, from Peggy Newman, Newman in, in the Wall Street Journal was and, and how the Clintons don't know, get Peggy away with Noonan it. Peggy Noonan is a very conservative columnist. Yeah, and she also worked for Reagan, didn't right. she? Right, yeah. Wasn't she a she speech was a speechwriter for, speech for Ronald Reagan. I just want people to understand the reference to Peggy Noonan. Not everybody knows she, who she is anymore. She, she's not as relevant she, as she once she, was. She was the speechwriter for Republican Jesus, uh, yeah, Ronald Reagan. Yeah, I love that. So the... The title, the title of her um, of her piece in the Wall Street Journal, uh, which is by in no way a biased uh, newspaper, um, was titled "How the Clintons Get a How How the Clintons Get Away with It." The subtext on this was the Clintons are protected from charges of corruption by their reputation for corruption. Peggy Noonan writes, "This was posted by a group on Facebook that call themselves the Real Progressives." I tweeted this back out with with this text. Can you really call yourself a progressive if you use Peggy Noonan to make your point? You know, I mean, really? Come on. She wrote some stuff during the financial crisis. So you can imagine uh, the feelings I have about Peggy Noonan uh, basically blaming greedy homeowners uh, for the financial crisis uh, in 2008 slash 2009. And, uh, you know, I... I'll I'll find that article that I wrote about Peggy Noonan and send it to you. It was it was early in my blogging career on Huffington Post, but I was not impressed. Well, and of course, uh, for those that don't know, the Wall Street Journal is now owned by Rupert Murdoch, who also owns Fox News. All right. With that said, uh, let's go back to the uh, the the Cruz Kasich Alliance, which. You and I talked uh, late in the afternoon yesterday after you posted that great picture of Ted Kasich uh, to describe the show yesterday. Or, I'm sorry, Ted Cruz to, Ted to Cruz. describe the show yesterday. And um, needless to say, uh, there have already been a lot of media reports from both conservative and those that are perceived as liberal media sources. So we'll take that as the truth. Uh, I actually watched some of the interviews, so I know that there is some truth to it. Uh, but Donald Trump, of course, had to have his chancy uh, to uh, ring in. So he, uh, he has a little temper tantrum. And what I find interesting about it, and we'll talk about it on the other side, is not what he had to say. I think it was fairly predictable, but how much I agreed with it. So let's go with the first one, uh, Donald Trump's little temper tantrum towards Lion Ted and John Kasich. Uh, what, what does he call him now, uh, 42 to 1 or something? One yeah, what, of, one whatever, of 42 yeah, or, 38, 41, yeah, right. he can't get the number right. <laughs> all right, here's, here's, let's roll the tape, Tony. Hey. Oh, did you see the news today? Did you see where they band together, where they collude? You know, it's collusion. You know, if you collude in business, if you collude in business or if you collude in the stock market, they put you in jail. But in politics, because it's a rigged system, because it's a corrupt enterprise, in politics, you're allowed to collude. So they colluded, and actually I was happy, because it shows how weak they are. It shows how pathetic they are. You know, I tweeted today, at real Donald Trump, I tweet. And that's, you know, it solves them. Don't worry, I'll give it up after I'm president. We won't tweet anymore, I don't think. Not presidential, but let me tell you, and I said, it takes two long-time politicians, right? Too long to beat, except they're way behind. If you add up the both votes and if you add up the both delegates, they're way behind me, so it doesn't matter. But it takes two guys, long-time politicians, to try and get together to try and beat Trump, and yet they're way behind. And I said to myself, that's pretty bad. That's pretty bad. And here's the key. I've only been doing this for 10 months. I haven't even been doing it very long. But 
So I wanted to talk to you about one thing, then we'll get back to the other and we'll get back to it. But I loved it when I heard it. I heard it last night at 1130. I was called and they said, sir, Kasich, we call him one for 41. I thought it was 38. He's won one race in 41 states. One. Okay. States and islands. So I call him now. I have a new nickname for him. One for 41. Very soon it's going to be one for 46 or seven. So he's going nowhere. And he keeps talking about how he does with Hillary Clinton. He hasn't had one negative ad yet. When they put in the first negative ad about him, he's going to collapse like a rock. Will you want, wait till you see this. Boom. Boom. You'll see. You will see. I will beat Hillary Clinton, crooked Hillary. I will beat her so badly. So badly. And lion Ted Cruz cannot beat her. He, has, he can't beat her. Hey, look. He got, like, no votes in New York. If you can't get any votes in New York, it's over, folks. He can't beat her. You look at his numbers in New Jersey. You look at his numbers all over the country. Lion Ted Cruz will lose so badly to crooked Hillary. It'll be one of the great defeats ever. And Kasich will also as soon as they start putting up the negative ends. All right. First of all, see, let me ask you a question. How do rocks collapse? <laughs> Ever since I heard him say that and I watched it live, I'm just curious. I've never seen a rock collapse. So that's number one. Really? I, I, I could go on. No, I've never seen a rock collapse. I've seen them fall. I've seen them blown up. Uh, and then they make stones out of them, by the way. Uh, but I, I've never seen a rock collapse. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of curious about that. Uh, Donald, I want to do you a favor. When it comes to counting and you run out of fingers, take your shoes and socks off and use your toes. <laughs> Simple math, my friend. Um, he had quite a meltdown there, Z. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, he's being treated unfairly, Tony. Well, you know, interestingly, collusion. Did you like the way he said collusion? Collusion. Collusion. I, know, I love that. Um, <laughs> I was saying my. My wife and I were watching it last night while we were having dinner. I'm and, sorry. Um, yeah, I know. I'm, amazingly, I don't I don't get sick um, when that happens. But I was watching him, and I'm just looking at her, and the whole time for the rest of the evening, I'm just going, collusion, collusion, collusion. collusion. All right. Well, um, let's uh, – because uh, I've got like 25 things I want to get to, and we've only got about 11 minutes left. Uh, not only did Trump pick on Mr. 38 and one or 42 and one or soon enough, 46 or 47 and one. He also had to take uh, a shot at the way John Kasich eats. Now, I will admit that often when they show John Kasich, he's eating somewhere. And I'll admit as well uh, that he doesn't do it well. You know, eating in public is not the easiest thing to do, especially when you're a presidential candidate and you're being asked questions at the same time. So this is what Donald Trump had to say about John Kasich eating. Worse, you watch, worse than NAFTA. Now you look at Kasich. I don't think he knows what, you know, did you see him? He has a news conference all the time when he's eating. I have never seen... A human being eat in such a disgusting fashion. I'm always telling my young son, Baron, I'm saying, and I always with my kids, all of them, I'd say, children, small little bites, small. This guy takes a pancake and he's shoving in his mouth. Like, it's disgusting. Do you want that for your president? I don't think so. I don't think so. It's just honestly, it's disgusting. And then one of the things he said, you know, they make a deal. Politicians, they're no good for deals. So they make a deal at 11, 11.30 last night. The deal... That they're going to collude. Well, he's finally... Collude. He's at least finally got something on Kasich. He's, yeah. you know, he always goes after... Well, he always goes after bodily functions, right? I mean, it's like he's sweaty. Um, did you see him sweating? Do you see how much water he drinks? He's low energy. I don't know what Hillary was doing at the break, but whatever it was, it was disgusting. It was some disgusting female stuff that she had to do. 
this is this is what he does. And I mean, the thing is, Tony, is that it sticks. It sticks. I, I mean, I watched. They had a, a video up this morning of basically Kasich eating, and it. He's right. It's not pleasant to look at. You know what? He is right, <laughs> and he was right in his comments about them colluding. Um, again, I, as much as I hate to agree with Donald Trump, and I don't agree with the way he said it, but what he had to say to me was pretty true. All right. With that said, um, gosh, where do we even begin with the Ted Cruz audio? Um Maybe we should just play it and then talk about it. I, I don't even know how to describe this. Um, well, this this is a new it's a new ad. Um, and actually, um, actually, it's a really good ad. <laughs> it's um, it's uh, it's high quality. It's uh, definitely uh, production. The, the high production value Uh uh, the the camera angles on it are really good. You need if if you listen to the audio, you you absolutely need to go find this online. Uh, it is um, it's it's I I gotta hand it to him. It it really is, you know I mean we're we're starting to sound like Trump and Cruz supporters towards the end of the show here, and I'm really uncomfortable with it. But uh, yeah, let's play this. This is the audio from the new Ted Cruz. Um, Ted Cruz campaign ad. What do you have for me? Mrs. Clinton. Madam Secretary, the plan is coming together. Donald Trump is paving the way for you to win the White House. What's our next move? Our oppo file on Trump is ready to go. When our friends in the media release this stuff, he's toast. Silencing dissenters with lawsuits, taking people's property, and a long list of failed businesses. He plays fast and loose with the facts, and he's only concerned with himself. He isn't trusted either. And he has the second highest disapproval ratings of anybody running for president. Who has the highest? Trump's comments on abortion have angered pro-lifers and the pro-choice crowd. So he's a uniter on abortion? He doesn't think things through, not with abortion and not with his taxes. Our friends at the IRS say his returns are full of bombshells. Now, he claims to be a billionaire, but takes tax credits for people that make less than half a million a year. Speaking of bombshells, Trump wants to stabilize the Korean Peninsula by giving Japan and South Korea nuclear weapons. Scary. Our research shows that most people actually think he is scary. And he wants to break apart NATO and the UN and turn our troops into rent cops Where did he study foreign policy? Trump University? The point is, if Trump becomes the Republican nominee, the White House is yours. What do you mean, if? Our latest polling indicates Americans want a president they can trust. Someone who isn't, uh... A liar? Someone who respects the Constitution and the rights it protects. Someone who has a proven track record taking on the Washington establishment. America wants a real leader. All right, get to the point. Who are we talking about here? How do we stop Ted Cruz? How do we stop Ted Cruz? I don't think we can. <laughs> it just goes to show you that production value doesn't win you votes. Um, and funny, yeah, absolutely funny, and but that's what it is to me, is funny, and... It helps Ted Cruz earn his Donald Trump, Trump nickname, Lion Ted, because uh, that yeah. was full of nothing but lies, uh, which is just absolutely hilarious. Listen, very quickly, I uh, want to get to the Amy Schumer audio. Uh, she is hilarious. Uh, many, of course, have seen her on lots of different things and movies and Saturday Night Live, of course, and other things. And she takes on the Republican establishment as it comes to women's health care. 
So why don't we uh, get to that, and then we'll wrap it up on the other side. Where's the doctor? We're your doctor. No, you're a bunch of congressmen. I recognize you. I just need to get my annual pap smear. You. Do any of you have any medical training? We're the House Committee on Women's Health. So I think we have a better idea than a bunch of science-y nerdles. You mean doctors? Let's begin. When was the date of your last lady curse? Two weeks ago, if you mean my period. Ew. And how many blood diapers did you use? Tampons? A, a dozen? I don't know. And that is? Twelve. Now it says here you're 34. Yeah. How many children do you have? None. But it says here you're 34. Correct. Are you sexually active? Yeah. And how many children do you have? How often do you and your husband... Uh... Oh, I'm not married. So you're a virgin. <laughs> Have a lollipop and run along. No, I'm not a virgin. I'm just not married. I just need my annual pap smear to make sure I'm healthy. I have a family history of cervical cancer. Ooh. How many men have you laid with in the last year? Sex? Three? Mm. Jesus. Don't two of you have, like, secret families with your maids? We're not the ones on trial here. That's right, young lady. Keep okay, going. okay. Guess we have to do the vagina part. What? what? What are you doing? Remember, even though we're doing this, we are not your boyfriend. <laughs> what? Please scooch down on the table, put your legs in those restraints, and present. What? Wait, I'd feel a lot more comfortable with a woman in here. Aren't there any women on the Women's Health Committee? That'd be like letting the lions run the zoo. <laughs> <laughs> Classic. Classic Z. <laughs> I like the ew. Ew. Yeah, I know. I know it's great. That we have to do the blood, vagina -y things. Blood, blood diapers. Um, blood diapers. I mean, just ew. Um, hilarious. I'm sure you heard the news that Megyn Kelly uh, has landed an interview with Donald Trump, which will air May 17th on Fox News. It's part of a... A special that she is doing called Megyn Kelly Presents. It will uh, She'll sit down with celebrities and politicians alike. And it'll be interesting to hear how that goes. Uh, and it'll be pre-recorded, so Donald Trump will be able to say what? They edited out. It's out of context. I protest. Blah, 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 blah. We'll see. We'll hear. Save the Al Franken audio for Thursday. Let me let the audience know you and I will be off tomorrow. Um, frankly, I need a day off. I need a whole day off, and so I'm going to take one. Um, the primary results will not change no matter whether you and I are on tomorrow or not. Um, so, uh, no, we're not going to the five northeastern states and voting five different times. Uh, that is not what we're doing. It's not about early and often for us. It's really about unplugging tomorrow as far as I'm concerned. But see, for those that are hungry, dying, absolutely thirsty, and need that thirst quenched by more information about T and Z talk, how will they go about getting that? Well, before before we go there, I want to go back to Amy Schumer for a sec because I just posted to Facebook and Twitter so you can see the picture. It's uh, Amy Schumer. It's a picture of Amy Schumer taken for Vanity Fair yeah. by uh, Annie Leibovitz. Looking pretty and hot, her isn't vagina she? Is on, her, her vagina is on fire. Really. <laughs> her vagina is on fire. And uh, she uh, – she, in the quote in Esquire, she said, I begged Annie to photograph me with no underwear on in just a T-shirt. I explained to her how, how important it was to me, and she finally agreed. I felt powerful and beautiful. She understood once we shot it, or maybe she ran to the bathroom to throw up. It was one of the most meaningful moments of my life. So that picture, that article is up on our Facebook and Twitter feed. Can so, we now quench that thirst? Question. Can we quench that thirst, please? <laughs> 
back to your original question, if you want to find us, you can find us on tnztalk.com on the interwebs. And you can find our Facebook, Twitter feeds, uh, everything, and, of course, how to support us. And don't forget, we are migrating to a strictly podcast show. We will no longer be live streaming after this week. Uh, so you can follow us on um, on that website, tnztalk.com. You can also subscribe to our newsletter to get daily newsletters of our show, our daily show, and it will tell you where to find it also on iTunes and Twitter and Facebook and everything you need to know about Tony Trippiano, Richard Zombeck, and the TNZ talk show. <laughs> so very quickly before we wrap things up, <laughs> Z's post to Facebook is, here's Amy Schur's vagina on fire. Uh, that's literally what he wrote, uh, and which is one of the many reasons I love this guy. In the meantime, we are out of time for today. I'm Tony Truppiano. He is Richard Zombeck. Again, TNZTalk.com. That's it for us for today. And as always, we ask that you be well. Oh, yeah. Can you feel it? Just over the credits, just riffing now. Words and chords. Not the poetry and the real thing, but... Not bad for an ad lib. Not good, but. And it's not long enough, so just do a little bit more. And that's nearly done. That's the final credit there. That's the end. <clears throat>